Hello everyone. Uh, so we are thrilled to announce that people from 25 countries have registered for this webinar today. So, so we want to thank all of you in different time zones. A warm welcome to all of you from Kovea. Today, myself, Amit Das Gupta, Director of Major Accounts and Partnership at Kovea, have with me Mr. Joydeep Datta, who is the Director of our Development at Kovea. We will, both of us will take you through an exciting informational journey on how the world of tools integration has evolved so far and where it is heading to. We will also discuss in details about REST APIs and how you can leverage the benefits of Covair API offering. So with this, uh, let's get started. So to start with, let us first have a quick look into the importance of integration. Right? So how integration works or what are the benefit that an organization get through an integrated environment? It brings people, process and technology together and break silos for achieving better quality and increased productivity. But the question is how integration helps to achieve all this. So with an integrated environment, what you can achieve is data visibility across different phases of development and delivery lifecycle, traceability between objects, irrespective of the tools where the data is residing, process automation across phases, as well as reports and dashboards using the data residing across tools. But the, now the question that comes into mind is that how it all started. Back around in the year 2000, there were single vendors like Microsoft, IBM, who came with solutions for all phases. But the problem with this was that organizations got restricted within the features and functionalities provided by the vendor. And also each phase was integrated based on the vendor's guidelines of usage. So with this, this become a problem and a bottleneck. Why? Because with increasing usage of varied tools, the industry started shifting towards point to point integration. So every tool was connected to each other based on certain predefined rules and procedures. And with increasing number of tools, this also become a bottleneck as this philosophy not only increased the cost and complexity, but also raised the operating risks and the system failures. Right. So when these two approaches failed, Industry adopted a new option, which was the Enterprise Service Bus or ESB. So it was widely accepted by the industry due to various advantages it brought into the table. Like some of the major advantages were it brought in a simple, well defined, pluggable system and cleared out the spaghetti maze created by point to point integrations. ESBs also increased flexibility of integrating tools and was easier to change with requirements change. It is mostly sta SOA standards based, allowing incremental patching with zero downtime. And one major benefit that I would like to state here for the ESBs was that in that ESB brought in was accommodating your existing systems. Just like for an example, ESBs like Cover Omnibus, it supports integration of the in-house tools that organizations have and ensured that none of your existing tool investment is lost. So going to the next point that what is the ESB that we talked about? So this is how it looks like. It's a middleware in the middle, sitting in the middle, having different data sources connected to it through adapters. It also provides a platform where things like processing logic, the synchronization frequency, transformation logic, data flow con conditions, all of these things gets configured, right? But that was not the ultimate solution. ESB was not the ultimate solution because we all know that change is the only constant thing in this world. So the IT industry is also going through a huge paradigm shift where the single objective is to get everything connected. Now different factors like increasing variety of tools and applications, increasing popularity of IoT, increasing use of usage of cloud, lesser time to market, increasing competition, then increasing dominance of handheld devices as well as increasing adoption of digital transformation are acting as catalysts to it. So with this major change, the methods of integration is also changing. The need for integration, integrating applications seamlessly and in a much shorter time is increasing day by day now. So what's the solution? 
the thing that happened is that ESB was no more sufficient to cater to these demands and there's a new concept of integration is now gaining popularity which is called the API integration platform. So API, what is that? It's the application programming interface which is a soft, which acts as a software intermediary that allows two applications to talk to each other and provides developer experience across all kinds of applications and services. So what API does is that this allows to create an omni-channel customer experience providing immense flexibility to integrate applications with ease. Right. So with that, what I will do is like the question that comes into my mind, or I am sure that pretty sure that what comes to everybody's mind that when we are talking about this API integration platform, what is the technology behind it or what are what is the technical item that keeps getting used behind it? So it is called the rest, which is the rest API right, to be very specific. So now what I will do is in the subsequent slides, I will pass the control to Joydeep, who will take us through the technical details of REST API and how it is used in the Covair API offering. So with that Joydeep, what I will do is I will pass the control to you and it's all yours now. Uh, thanks, Amit. Uh, so hello everyone. So let's take a deep dive into REST and go through some of the key features. At the later part of this webinar, I will be uh, showcasing some of the live demo on how Covair REST API can be used in different ways. So, so now what is REST? So we all know the REST means the representational state transfer. It's an architectural style for communicating between computers of two systems. Uh, and then what it does is actually, it is unrestful in nature, it is stateless, it's client server, and it's cacheable. And REST uses verbs, HTTP methods, which are get, put, post, to, and delete for communication. But if overall, what is rest basically so and in rest we say representation of what and what is the state transfer so so now the bigger question is we are saying it's a stateless and again we are saying we are saying it as a state transfer so in rest everything that is being set for sharing are called resources so here in rest everything is meant for sharing is termed as resource and state is defined by the resource state so if an application or if a system which allows anyone to transfer the resource and its state from its server to client then that application or a system can be treated as a rest enable system or a rest api so so next, so now we are saying that it's a rest. Now, what does it mean a restful? In the market and in industry, there are a lot of uh, a lot of things that have been said about rest. Are the APIs you are developing is restful? It's a restful web service. So tends to answer all those questions. So restful API is also referred to as restful web service. There's no difference. Primarily, it has some six principles. So any REST API which supports five out of them and sixth is the optional is treated as a RESTful API and enables, it enables any platform to emerge like its properties being simplicity, performance, scalability and reliability. So, so over the period, uh, we have seen that uh, SOAP with WSDL are gradually falling out of the favor as industry is slowly moving toward REST. In fact, most people believe that to build a RESTful API, you can simply create an API-based URLs and some HTTP verbs. But in practicality, it's not true. This is misunderstanding is going around for too long. 
but unlike other technology restful guidelines are very clear enough to define it and anyone who is building an api can follow that and create its own restful api now let's get a uh, more deeper dive into the api specifications or principles so first it says it's a client server so it means client application and server application must must run in an independent manner and without depending on any one of them as long as the client knows the uri of the resource and it remains constant server and client may be developed independently as long as as long as interface between them is not altered so next it says about stateless so what is stateless so before going into the details of the stateless the entire notion of the statelessness is defined from the perspective of the server the constraint is that server should not remember the state of the application as a consequence the client should send all information necessary for execution along with each request basically what the specification says the server is stateless means every server can service any client at any point of time there is no session no affinity or no sticky sessions the relevant session information must be stored at the client side without having any traces of data in the server so now coming to the points each and every request should be treated as a new no session no history no client context be stored as a server between the request and client is responsible for managing the state of the application next go to the cacheable so we all know what's cacheable the so caching is the ability to store copies of frequently accessed data in several places along with the request response channel when a consumer or a client requests a resource the request goes through a cache or a series of cache and now cache can be a local cache a proxy cache or a reverse proxy to the service hosting resource if any of the cache along with the request path are fresh then that is sent if it is not there a fresh copy is fetched from the repository and to serve the client so a restful service should have some kind of caching when dealing with resources or when answering to the client request next come the uniform interface and it's a very important uh, very important principle so it says there are a couple of uh, verbs primarily four and total six those has to be used when interacting with an uh, with an api which is restful in nature now the question is uh, what and when should i use what kind of verb so get being used to retrieve data from the server uh, generally in get we do not uh, do not try to put a huge load of it it's um, it should be as simple as that post and put are for creation and upgradation but what we have seen that many people struggle to choose between http put versus http post when to use what so primarily put being used to modify a single resource which is already a part of the resource in the server and generally post being used to create a new item either the child of a resource or it's a brand new resource but uh, overall say another question is that if i take a very simple example i have to build an application which say for example some kind of iot example where i where i need to uh, give uh, an user where they can ask questions so if you want to post a new question into a list then we can use the keyword post or the verb post but if i want to upgrade a existing resource or existing question into my list i can use the put 
next comes the layered system now what is the layered system so layered system says in rest your application can have resources residing in various servers internally just like here i am saying that api is hosted on my server s1 my repository or data stores in s2 and my authentication system resides on s3 so client when accessing that api should be agnostic in nature and they shouldn't be knowing or get a flavor of it and which server they are now connected to now the third is that code on demand it's an principle that's is an optional currently coware api endpoints do not uses it and do not support it in most cases user will be sending a static representational resource in the in the json format so typically you can say that i have a, a system where i am generating reports and, and my client is a very thin client so I, I need to have a report from a server. So what I can do, I can create an endpoint. And when I, when I should call that endpoint, I should get an executable or an complete HTTP uh, HTML data, which I can render immediately. So that's basically all about the basic principles of the REST. So now, why did Cover choose REST API as its one another endpoint to its platform? First of all, it allows greater variety of data formats, where in comparison with SOAP, SOAP primarily works on XML. Uh, REST by its architecture is better in performance and uses lesser bandwidth when moving data across network where latency of uh, response is a bigger factor. REST API use most of the major services like eBay, Amazon, Google. So, enter industry is moving to that technology. It has a very uniform interface of transferring data and accessing the data. Thus, it becomes very easy for client to make all those calls and get the data. It provides more, more, more visibility, reliability, and scalability. Uh, visibility is generally supported uh, with the richness of data you are supporting, with the capability of headhouse. So I will go into some of those things. And, of, and not last and not the least, it's more flexible and more portable. Now let's come to the point, what is Cover REST API? What is all about it? Now, when we crafted our REST API, it has been taken a very meticulous step. And we always thought about it that we should give the clients a very straightforward and a clean integration experience. Since we are integration framework and we have been integrating a lot of tools, 70 to 80 tools, and we feel that is one of the primary uh, reason for getting any API to be absorbed or uh, uh, adopted. And it is helpful in nature. We adhere to all the uh, principles of the rest. In terms of security, it supports, it supports HTTP, HTTPS, uh, TLS 1.1, TLS 1.2, or we can say SSL V2 is uh, TLS 1.2. It ensures every all data is completely secure. Now, when we send a response, we send it in a JSON. So JSON means uh, JavaScript object notions. Cover APIs supports the HETOS. So HETOS means hypermedia as the engine of application state. So what is in HETOS? And, and it's being very uh, commonly used in now in the integration sphere where REST API plays a primary role. So now the response that a REST API sends, it has to have a richness. So now the biggest benefit with HETOS, the output makes it easy to glean how to interact with the service without looking into specifications or external document. So if I get a response and, and all the associated data 
are being provided to me as in hyperlinks. So from an end user perspective or end user client perspective, I may not be visiting any sites or would I need to do any document to find what is the link to get the next set of data. So Cobra REST API supports that and all the relevant informations are delegated to the client using those. Now, what is the benefit of this Covair REST API? So, first of all, Covair platform has its LM, it has its Omnibus. The Covair Omnibus has integration with 80 commercial tools, COTS tools. So, integrating with REST API of Covair, it will allow it will allow uh, the client to communicate with the entire set of tool chain. So it's a single interface, thus it allows less uh, headache to the clients to know what APIs to call and it gives a single straightforward interface to access. It is available on cloud as well as on premises and it has a comprehensive uh, I would say help document which allow the end user to connect. Okay. So next, okay, let's get a very top level view of how Covair API has been implemented. Now, Covair API lies at the very top level. It's a single interface for the end users. It has its next layer as the API common security layer. Now this layer is the primary layer where all the authentications, the license checking, the resource accessibility gets checked. And after that, it has connected to its covers three primary products. What's the LM Studio, a data leak and the Omnibus. So thus this diagram shows a single interface can be used to connect all these three products. So, and th so thus it makes the client, the end clients, as a simple one interface to do all its job. <coughs> Next, here is a, a presentation where we are trying to showcase you what are the primary uh, capabilities of this API for each of the product lines that Covair has. When we talk about LM Studio, it's an integrated LM Studio. Through API, one can manage workspaces or projects. Any, any work item can be edited, modified, deleted. One can get the details of an item. It gives a complete 360 degree view of an item. It has the power of querying the items. It also exposes the Covair Kanban board and also allows you to do the task management. Covair has a very powerful Omni process, which is a task based process, and that can be that can be taken care using this API. On the right hand side, we have Omnibus. Omnibus is a platform which allows any tool to connect to any other tool, which does the data integration. Thus, using this API, one can configure any omnibus bridge. Adapters can be connected. Business full flows can be configured. User mapping can be done. Querying items from the tool can be done. It can also do some actions and as well as it can it can does a query. So in my demo, in the in the later part of this demo, I will try to showcase one of these features that say for example, I have a Jira and I have a couple of bugs into Jira. And how can I use Cover API to get those Jira data without knowing that API is of Jira? You can have Cover Adapter and have Cover REST API and get the data out of Jira. So that I will showcase you later in my demo. Now let's get some more technical details. Now where, what we are saying is that Cover REST API is built on Microsoft latest Wave API 2.0 and on 
on on dot net 4.6 the .NET 4.6 inherently give you support for the TLS 1.2. So it has its client on the top, then the network, it can be local network, it can be internet. Then there are a series of endpoints there, which exposes the data, the endpoints. And here is the controller we have. Now that's, this controller is not an MVC controller. It's an, it's an HTTP API controller. So API controller, as you all know, that it has more power and more specializing in returning data, whereas MP MVC controller is more specialized in or more powerful in rendering a view. Since you're working with an endpoint of an API, which practically do not have any uh, interfaces, thus we chose this one. It has a couple of models in between, uh, and these models are specific to the business functionalities and the core business layer that at the at the last stage and the central repository this is the entire stack of um, layers that is there for covid api now let me give you an overview on a simple example how covid api works and what is the process of doing it so even before you start using the api first and foremost thing one has to do is to authorize so any named user in this ecosystem can only access the apis so one has to pass the username and the password if that username or password is uh, authorized the system sends a token a token is an encrypted key which is unique in nature in time and space so that token is your next key for next subsequent calls so once this token is passed now what it does is it it actually gives the client the token now the token needs to be passed for every subsequent calls to get authenticated so for example if i use the put function after this put uh, then I have to pass a token similarly if I use a get I also have to pass a token so token is the primary thing that has to be passed for every communication which I will show you in my in my demo next come the API documentation which I will now show you in live so cover has a very rich online documentation api is an another another url which give you all the endpoints which have been clubbed into some with some controls it's allow the end user to check the api immediately without installing any other third-party client like postman or any visual studio code you have to write you can try it out there so for this let me go to uh, our documentation or online help and try it out some simple things and show you all that how it works okay okay so now this is the entire uh, api and it has some username password and that has to be there and you have to authenticate yourself so for example i want to authenticate and so what i can do i can go to this authenticate and i can click so authenticate now if you see this endpoint every endpoint has a description what it does and who can access that so everything is written here so here if i want to try it out i will click here it will give you all the things, the examples, the response, and the key. So here, what I am trying to do, I am copying this means if I click here, I'll say that my username is this. I have a dummy password and application user. So if I click on this and I say, try it out, it should give me a token. So this is my token and this is an expiry. So this is a token that I, that got generated for authorization now if i have to do a next set of job say for example i want to see what is my workspace and i want to get some details of it 
So I will go to my workspace and I will click this this details. <clears throat> okay, and I have to give a name to my workspace to try it out. So now this is my Cocoaware application, and here is the name of the workspace. It's Cocoaware Engineering. So if I want to know details of this workspace, what I can do, I can write where and say try it out. It says authorization denied because my password has expired. Okay, let me check it out. Okay, let me check it out and authenticate myself first. And let me check it out. Okay, it now got authenticated. Now it's giving me that, okay, the project name is this. It has one entity called requirement and the details of this requirement is this location. So this is what we call a hethos where the information of this workspace not only give you the richness of the data, but it also give you subsequent links which an end user can try it out and go to the next level of details. So this is one perspective of it. So every aspect of the product line, just like ALM Studio, Omnibus, and Italic, all those things have been grouped into several controllers and end users can try it out, each one of them. Next, if I go back to my slide uh, and click on this, this is an example that I've showed you over there where I am saying that this is my key and this is my expiry time. Next goes to an access token. Now, before going into the slide, let me go and show you some simple examples. Here is a Visual Studio code that I have written um, just a few hours back prior to this webinar to try something else. So this can be your any third party client side application, an application outside Cover. So what I did is that and when I click on the start, I said I have an username and password that I have to give. The moment I give it, it gives me a token. Now let me go to my cover platform where I have my workspace and I have my requirements. So here is my set of requirements that I have. Now, if I want to fetch this data out of cover, cover being a central repository, requirements can come from and external resources come from tools connected and I want to fetch this data out of Cover and do some analysis outside. So I can easily create my own internal application and fetch the data out of it. So let me do that. So I have logged in and say, and I say get requirements. So moment I do a get requirements, I can see all my requirements that's in my application is here. So if now I create an, another uh, requirement Say, for example, I have copied some of my sample example data. Okay. Oops. And I say status is in progress and I sum save the data. So I am adding a requirement in my platform. And now you know, what I can try to do, I can fetch the data outside in my application and show them how it works. Moment I do see the data has here. So now this represents a scenario that I, I can have a central repository where data may come from different locations and I can extract it into an outside tool and any BI tool and can show a demo and show can show a report there. On a contrary, on the other side of it, I can have data outside and can I can put into Cover ALM Studio and do some reporting and data processing there. So let me do a simple example. Let me create an ad requirement. I have a sample form. Let me take another example, say Android user. Android user need to use Apple Store. Added externally. And I say add. The moment I say add, it to our REST API, it's got added and if I refresh it, Here is my data. So using so the, using this cover in a REST API, one can extract data out of cover as well as it can put data inside the cover for analysis and reporting. 
So this is another way of accessing the data. So we have seen that you can use the Cover API help doc to primarily do some basic jobs. <coughs> if, you're, if you want deep integrations and deep level of data, then the job, the, the best way to do is you're going to write a code. So here is a sample code I have written. I have taken a very REST client and I have given my URLs, means the endpoints. I have given some header. I have passed my data through an to the request request parameter. I got my response and I have shown it. It's a very simple way of handling it. So if you recall it, we said that we tailor made that API so that it gives an end user a very straightforward experience. And that's the code I'm showing you because we want to show that okay, this using our API is not a complex, it's not a rocket science that you know we have to learn. It's a very simple thing that you can do. Similarly, let me show another example using a very popular client. It's called Postman. So before going into Postman, let me give an example. Say, for example, I have a Jira application. Jira is a, a very common defect management tool as well as it's now it's an agile and other domains. So now say I have uh, three bugs and one epic. So if I want to get this data out of Jira using a common interface, what the best I can do? We can use Cover Adapter, Cover Omnibus and this REST API. So let's try out a simple example using this Postman to get the data. So first and foremost, what I have to do, let me go to Postman and I have taken an authenticate because this is the first thing I have to do. The moment I click on Postman, it gives me a, a token. So let me copy the token. Let me copy the token. And then what I have done, I have we have an endpoint is called entity items. So entity items when connected to an adapter will give you all the data from the tool itself. So let me update my token here is so in my header. I have given the content type and the token. The moment I do it, the rest API goes to cover omnibus. From Omnibus, it gets data from the adapter and from the adapter, it goes to the tool and using Jira API, it gets the data. So it sees, so I have in my body, I have given the bug. So I want the bug to be uh, fetched out of Jira and the view and the filter. View means the columns and the filter means the rows. So you can see I got that requirement list. This is my first requirement means first bug and then this is my second bug with all the attributes and this is my third bug so if i go to jira and then i will see that okay let's take an example so during logout home screen stays unresponsive 001 so if i go to this you will see during logout is 001 so similarly so this this shows me that i can extract data from jira now let's say does this Jira bug got updated? Now you say, and system hangs. Now this Jira defect got updated. The moment it's updated, now if I make the second the same call, I should be able to get the latest data from the system. See, system section. So it gives me the, so let I just go one by one. So it says, this is the ID, the key V is KV, KOV02. This is this one, KOV02. It has a summary. Summary means if I click on this, the data this is a summary. Assignee, whom to is assigned, the reporter and the priority. That means, what we are trying to showcase is that you can extract the Jira data along with all its attributes outside Jira using our API. Similarly, say, take a very simple example. I only I want to ex extract the epic. So I write epic and I say send. Yeah, 
the moment I click say pick, it should give me the electronics and mobile accessories. So let's go to Jira and see what is there. Okay, so now here is this. And here also, if I update the data, the similar data will be updated here. And here also, you get the key, the summary, the assignee, the and the reporter and the priority and all the data that is required, all will be here. So what we try to do here is that we have shown the three interfaces. One is Cover APIs, means API document can be used to primarily check the initial data. One can also use a Visual Studio or any client which can consume our REST data. Also, we have also tried to use a Postman, a very popular client tool, REST client tool, which can be used to extract data from Jira or any connected tools so that you can extract this data out of this the system and create your own reports and other stuffs. Okay, so let me go back to my slides. So this is the LM query that I have shown to and my true LM query is through my uh, the Visual Studio application. And last what I want to go for is that now since we have integrations, we have cover into omnibus and the, then what is the role of Cover Omnibus and what is the role of the REST API? So, so REST API acts as an extension or gives an uniform interface for extracting data in and out of the system. So extract data plot for platform since platform is the central repository for solutions like DevOps, Agile and Defect Management. Thus organizations can extract raw data from the platform. And, gen and create organization specific reports. However, for IT teams where Omnibus is a primary uh, usage and their one needs a rapid generation of bridges. A bridge means, say, I want to integrate between Jira and any tool like ServiceNow. So this bridge need to be set up very quickly and this is a repetitive job. So what the IT team can do, they can create scripts. The scripts will actually consume the, uh, the REST API and they only need to execute the script Then automatically the script will call the API and a new bridge will be, will be uh, deployed or provisioned within a few minutes. So the API is for you can, through API one can create a workspace, through API one can hook the adapters, the mappings can be done, the service flow can be done, and it will be it will be done. Again, say there can be a case that you have some data in an organization, there can be a lot of small segregated systems where data is the data are located as a legacy item. Now, what has happened using this API? what one can do one can push all the data from the legacy systems into the cover platform using this api on the other side of it if cover alm platform or cover enter platform being used as a central repository where data is coming from multiple tools or multiple uh, multiple applications through integrations or cover alm application being used as a devops then data generated into the system can be extracted out for analysis. There are some very popular BI analysis tools. So one can use any of them using this API and all BI tools generally support uh, consuming of APIs. So these APIs can be used to extract data out of it and build their own organizational reports. And lastly, say for example, now Omnibus being a primary integration platform, all the transactions are happening over the day and night. Now, there can always be a need that I want an external system to generate a report 
that how many transaction has happened say for example i am doing a migration i am doing a synchronization how many record got failed how many got passed if those transactional data are required for integration or for any reporting those can be easily extracted using this cobear rest api and then can be used for the reports so here what we have covered is that we have covered the basics of the rest the basic principles of rest what is cobear rest api cobear rest api is completely restful in nature what are the architecture of the rest api and again what are the functionalities with some live demo so uh, overall that is all we have and next i am uh, going to the mode where we can go for a q and a session summit uh, anything thanks, from our uh, side thanks Jayadeep. yeah thanks Jayadeep. i think it was a great session with lot of deep technical insights into this world of apis i would say in the integration domain so people are, i mean as we discussed all throughout the presentation and as Jayadeep explained very well that how today everybody is looking for apis for seamless integrations so yeah i mean anybody if you have any questions you can type in your questions in the questions uh, panel we will be happy to answer your questions so let's wait for a couple of minutes uh, so that the questions may chime in so in the meantime Jayadeep, when, by the time when the questions come in I have a question from my side. So let's say uh, if somebody wants to extract data from different tools, right? Now, currently, what happens? The problem is that they need to know the APIs of those individual tools to extract the data or to push the data, right? So now, let's say if somebody uses this Cover API platform. So do you think that it will be an advantage over the fact that they need to? connect to the tools independently through their APIs instead Absolutely. of the Cover API. So if you can throw Absolutely. some light on that. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Amit. This is a very important and a very, very, very vital question. Yes, see, I mean, tools are of wide variety. Some of them support REST, some of them support COM API, some of them support CLI. So Cover have a deep knowledge on each of these tools and we have specific adapters for it. So using this, if anyone wants to connect to this, all these heterogeneous tools, then it is a pain for them because they have to learn the API for each of these tools. Now, how do you handle this? Situation? So what we can suggest is that use our Cover REST API, which internally communicates with our the uh, omnibus uh, adapters and get you the data so the end user may not be able to know all the apis but only need to learn the endpoints of the rest api so the learning come becomes much faster and deployment becomes rapid am i okay yeah yeah that's great that's great yeah uh, so i think uh, then that's it for now okay we have a question over here let me just pull out the question so the question is that in one of your examples you have shown fetching data out of jira with the help of api now jira has its own rest api so why would someone use cover api to fetch that data it can be simply done using jira rest apis absolutely but Consider an example you have Jira and you have say and you have another tool which is a COM API and you want to extract say in Jira you have bug and you have another tool which is also a defect management tool which is also a, which are supports COM API. Now I want a defect from both the tools then then what one has to do one has to learn the API for Jira one has to learn the API for other tool get both the data and then do it what we are saying okay fine we, we only learn the api for the cover and and it will internally take care of it so that's the usp of it okay thank you so there is another question that how secure are these apis so if somebody is using cover apis so how secure they are 
Yeah, absolutely. See, Coware API supports the latest encryptions like TLS 1.1 and 1.2, TLS 1.2. So if those channels are being used and they are all been approved and identified as secure, so all data will be generically secured. We don't have to vouch and say that it's secure. And all data, all primary encrypted data are get encrypted there. It means all passwords and those are not a, not clear text. They're all encrypted with an encryption. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I think we have some more time for more questions. Uh, otherwise, we will end this session. But uh, just for the information of everybody, so this session got recorded. And very shortly, we will share this recording with everybody. So if you want to refer to any of these, you can definitely go through this recording. Okay, there is another uh, API, uh, another questions, couple of questions that came in. One is that, hi, is it possible to integrate ALM and testing tools? Yes, if the tools support APIs, rich API, then definitely we can, one can extract it. No, no issue. Okay. Provided you have to have the adapter and for that. Absolutely. Okay. The next question uh, is that can you throw more light on the omnibus con configuration for support ITT? Uh, yes, I can see you in brief, but uh, this that is a very long thing. Say, for example, uh, I have to configure an integration between a Jira and ALM. So I have to connect my adapters. I have to map which project to which project. I have to map the entities. I have to map the fields. So if I do it manually, then it will take some time. But say, for example, I have a template that whenever this kind of bridge is required, I have to do bug to defect, fill to fill. I know that. So what we can do, we can write a script, any script, which consumes a REST API and you set those values in the script and you run the script. When you run the script, the API will be called one after the another and automatically the configuration will be done. That, that is way, I mean, for IT team, provisioning on time is a very important thing and that is the way one can improve. Okay. So I think we still have time to take a couple of more questions. Okay, another question that came in is, is your API support, does your API support paging? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So, okay. So I think then uh, that's it for today because uh, no more questions came in. So yes, as I was telling that uh, we will share this recording with all of you and you can refer to this and in future if you have any queries, please feel free to drop a mail to Cover Sales. Right, the mail address is given in the PPT in the slide, so you can definitely reach us over the mail or over the phone number that is written over there, and we will be more than happy to cater to your queries. Okay. Okay. So thank you again. Before ending, thanks everybody for your participation and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.